The jaws classification describes dislocations of the first metatarsal phalangeal, or MTP, joint. This entire classification system is based off the sesamoid position, their movement or lack of movement, and their relationship to each other. Before we begin describing the different stages, we should take a step back and review some basic anatomical and biomechanical principles. The first MTP joint is surrounded by a fibrous capsule that extends from the metatarsal neck to the base of the proximal phalanx. On the plantar aspect of this capsule, there is a fibrocartilaginous thickening known as a plantar plate. The plantar plate and the capsule are actually just one continuous structure, so don't think of them as two separate entities. The sesamoids are embedded within the plantar plate and divide the plantar plate into different regions. If you recall from anatomy, you have the phalangeal sesamoidal ligament, the metatarsal, phaling, the metatarsal sesamoidal ligament, and the intersesamoidal ligament. These are not true ligaments, they're really just different areas of the plantar plate. You also have two collateral ligaments, which a medial and a lateral, which originate from the tubercles on the metatarsal head and then insert on the tubercles, tubercles on the base of the proximal phalanx. You also have two metatarsal phalangeal suspensory ligaments that originate from the tubercles on the metatarsal head and then insert into the sides of the fibrous capsule. The medial and lateral heads of the flexor hallucis brevis attach to the sesamoids and the base of the proximal phalanx. The abductor hallucis attaches to the medial aspect of the medial sesamoid and to the medial aspect of the base of the proximal phalanx. The conjoined tendons of abductor hallucis attach to the lateral aspect of the lateral sesamoid and to the lateral aspect of the proximal phalanx. All these tendons give contribution to reinforce the fibrous capsule. The plantar plate has a loose attachment to the metatarsal head which allows for plantar flexion and dorsal flexion, and it has a strong attachment to the base of the proximal phalanx. As the hallux dorsal flexes, the plantar plate is stretched, and that draws the sesamoids forward. In a normal person, that is about one centimeter. The sesamoids move in conjunction with the proximal phalanx. The mechanism of injury is hyperextension of the MTP. In a type one, there is a rupture of the proximal attachment of the plantar plate. Remember that the proximal attachment is weak compared to the attachment of the plantar plate to the base of the proximal phalanx. When this area ruptures, it allows for an increase in the range of motion of the joint, meaning the hallux is allowed to continue dorsal flexing. And as the hallux continues to dorsal flex, the sesamoids are moved, are drawn distal and dorsal relative to the metatarsal. Also, the tendons become extremely taut, which keeps the metatarsal head in a fixed plantar flex position. There is no other injury to the sesamoid apparatus. So, to review in a type 1, the hallux is dorsal flexed, the sesamoids are distal and dorsal, there is a cervical plantar flexion of the metatarsal head, and the tendons are keeping it in place. In the literature, these types of injuries require open reduction. Closed reduction will not be very beneficial to the patient. Type 2 injuries are a continuation of type 1. As the hallux continues to dorsal flex, the intersesamoidal ligament may be ruptured, and this gives rise to one of three potential injuries. In a type 2A, there is a complete rupture of this ligament. On x-ray, you will see that there will be an increased space or width between the sesamoids. In the second scenario, a type 2b, rupture of the intersesamoid ligament causes an avulsion fracture of the tibial or fibular sesamoid, although the tibial sesamoid is more commonly injured. The fractured fragment can shift medial, lateral, distal, dorsal, plantar, really in any direction. And the last thing about type 2B is this concept of apposition. So let's say it was the tibial sesamoid that was fractured. Okay. 
Okay? There's an avulsion fracture of the tubule sesamoid. The proximal aspect of this fractured sesamoid will remain opposed, meaning in alignment, with the uninjured adjacent fibular sesamoid, whereas this fragment can sometimes be considered a loose body and will lose its apposition or alignment with the adjacent uninjured sesamoid. A type 2B is not necessarily the progression of a 2A, meaning you can have one without the other, but a combination of the two is known as a 2C. In that case, you'll see an increase in the width of the, or the space between the sesamoids, and you'll see an avulsion fracture off the tibial or fibular sesamoid. Generally speaking, type 2 injuries are closed reducible. In a type 3, the sesamoid apparatus remains intact and there is proximal retraction of the sesamoids and only the proximal phalanx dislocates the dorsal. The theory is that whatever dorsal flexor force that was causing the injury to the proximal attachment of the plantar plate is now occurring more distally, thereby causing the rupture of any of the attachments that occur at the base of the proximal phalanx. So again, the sesamoids do not dislocate dorsally and distally as you see in types 1 and 2. They remain relatively intact. The sesamoid apparatus remains relatively intact. It's just the attachments such as the tendons or maybe the phalangeal sesamoidal ligaments that may be injured, thereby causing injury to only the proximal feelings.